Thank you. That's what I really want to say. I could embellish that, but thank you. Maybe that was too short of a speech. <laughs> <coughs> so let me add a few anecdotes uh, to make it worth your while. When we came to visit here at the day which Lauren described so well, say yes to Andrews, mm -hmm. we had a couple of people looking after us. Rebecca May was one of them. I don't know if she's here or not. She's outside. Yeah, she's hiding around the corner. <clears throat> Rebecca May, at that time, when we were first visiting Andrews, arranged for us to have dinner by ourselves, just the two of us, in St. Joseph, to think about all the things we had seen and heard the first day, mm -hmm. to have a chance to decide whether this was for us or not. And at that time, <clears throat> Lauren Hamill owned a very, very large car the biggest they make in Detroit and he had uh, allowed it to be used for us to be chauffeured around uh, in the back seat of that very very big car and so someone took us to a restaurant overlooking the lake and this is what we saw out the window <clears throat> and my wife Demas said to me I think we better say yes. They have a lighthouse. <laughs> now you need to understand that my wife grew up in Greece and her father was in the Royal Navy. Uh, he was a captain. And when he married and had children, there are three girls in the family, he got a job ashore in the ministry of in the naval ministry in the government and his particular responsibility uh, in that government job was to supervise the operations and functions of all the lighthouses in Greece mm -hmm. of which there are many because that's like Denmark full of islands and sea everywhere so every island has several lighthouses and he was responsible for maintaining the lighthouses to keep the shipping safe mm -hmm. and because of that he had the right to spend summers with his family in one of those lighthouses, not so far from Athens, a lighthouse built on top of a house, which was a four room house where people could stay comfortably for the summer. So she spent her summers with her sisters and her mother following her father's death in the war in this lighthouse. And that has been a signal uh, for us ever since we go for the lighthouses. She has also visited all the lighthouses on the eastern shore of Lake Michigan. From here up to the top with some friends when she first arrived in town. And we regularly go down to look at this one. I don't know exactly why we do that. I think it's for family memories. But of course lighthouses have a spiritual meaning too. That's what tells you where to go. Not to run ashore. So this is a painting that will be very much appreciated as you can imagine it's just a daily reminder of where life began for her mm. and what we have been steering by for all these years mm -hmm. so thank you for this and thank you for your kind words i probably could say more things but i don't know how many more i should say <laughs> <laughs> except i have a habit of giving after dinner speeches and i will not fall into that bad habit tonight <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure <clears throat> but I do want to say to you that this has been an adventure for us. Not a chore, not a job, but an adventure. Uh, my wife, as you know, is a social being uh, and she knows more people in the St. Joseph, Western Michigan area than most people on campus I know of. She belongs to three or four women organizations with very strange names, like the antiquarians. <laughs> and all, all these people have the upper the up women in St. Joseph. She joined their organizations, and so she knows them all. And uh, they have been very helpful to Andrew, some of these contacts that he has made with the leading women in town. And so it has been an adventure for us uh, to work here, to live here, 
The winters have been a bad adventure for my wife. She doesn't like them at all. She would have been here tonight, but um, last week we went to California for a bunch of alumni meetings and some donor visits, uh, which were quite fruitful actually. I went with David also. And uh, she picked up something in the plane. I don't know what. She is coughing and wheezing and, uh, and feeling really very bad <laughs> tonight. So she begged to be excused, and I'm expressing to you her regrets of not being able to be here. When she hears about the lighthouse, she will probably <laughs> say to herself, I should have come anyway and taken the chance of getting worse tomorrow. But I'll bring it back to her and she will enjoy it there. I suppose we had reservations about leaving our previous employment. I'd only been there four years. The students joked with me at Walla Walla. They said, we came to you and we are graduating the U, and we are both leaving. <laughs> but I came to Andrews, and um, there was something about this place that appealed to us, and it was its international character. That it belongs to the world church, but that means it belongs to the people of the world. And these are our people. We speak with heavy accents, we can't get rid of them. We are connected around the world. We worked in Australia for a while. And my wife worked as a Bible worker in Greece for a while. I worked in Denmark at the Scottsboro Sanitarium for a bit. So we have these uh, connections and we thought at Andrews we can just bring it all together and make life rich and rewarding and uh, promising. So that's what we did. I had a couple of other ambitions in my mind when I came here. And uh, I will share them because probably I'm a bit of a lighthouse man myself. I wake up in the morning and close my eyes and ask, where am I going today? <laughs> uh, where's the light? It's not a physical light, it's an inner light. And it uh, tells me which direction to go for that day or for that year. I literally do that. And uh, I've told my friends, if the time comes when I can't see the light anymore, I will leave. That's not what I'm leaving now. <laughs> a different reason for that. But it was an ambition to follow the light in a couple of directions. One, I have great ambitions for academic people and academic institutions. Some people misunderstand that. I don't want you to. I just think God made us to be smart people. He gave us brains. He put us in his own image, which I don't think means we are his lookalikes. That to me is a bit offensive. I think it means we are his thinkalikes. Right? That's what he made, to think with him, think like him. To, there's, it's a meeting of minds, not a meeting of bodies. He made two, so we can meet bodies that way. But meeting of minds is really uh, how God made us and it seems to me the college or the university or the school is where we learn to do that to meet the mind of God and not only in theology classes which is my discipline but in every class because God made it all so science and humanities and social science and arts and whatever there is to learn architecture and design and engineering all of that is our ability to meeting the minds of God. Many years ago, one of our engineer <coughs> architecture uh, accrediting people came to see me. Uh, why we have an architecture program at Andrews? So what does that, he asked me in my office, what does that have to do with your mission? He was probing a little bit and poking at my mind and I said, it's very simple. God made space and we want to learn how to use it well. <laughs> okay, I get it. That's the long and the short of it. God made space and we're going to learn to use it well and design it well. He said, thank you very much, I've got it. I'm, you are accredited pretty well. So the academic life, the life of the mind is something I believe God wants us to have. Pity those people who are deprived of that. And the other thing I steer by is the life of faith. 
I pity people who don't have it. How do they go through the day? If they don't have faith, which is an inner conviction that there's goodness and there's value and there's God and there's purpose and there's eternity that we are invited to embrace. And my ambition in life has been to persuade people as much as I can that these two parts of our life, the life of the mind, which is hard-nosed academic research life in the library and in the labs, and life of the faith, which is a life of scripture and contemplation and prayer and meditation, these two belong together like twins. Mm -hmm. Don't ever give up any one of those. Mm -hmm. We'll lose them both. That's what I'm steering by. That's my little lighthouse that I go by every day. And I'm grateful that uh, Andrews has allowed me to pursue those two streams of light. Mm -hmm. I may not have done it as well as I should, but I have never been in doubt about where that lighthouse is directing us towards this. And I hope some of that has rubbed off on some of the students, some of my faculty colleagues here. Uh, they can speak for themselves. I'll just say two more things. Since you took the trouble to come and eat food with me, what a wonderful dinner. Yeah. Ah, that's great. Thank the food services and the organizers of this event. Beautiful tables and flowers and the string quartet, nice. which you know have been invited and in, invented to, to play at dinners, not in a concert hall. That's why they only have four instruments, so you can hear them in a dinner. That's just right. That's how we should eat with music. Uh, our music system at home has broken. My wife says, I cannot live without music. Get me a radio or something to play on. <laughs> So this was just right tonight. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, I want to conclude uh, my comments by just uh, making uh, two final observation, observations. And the first one is uh, deep gratitude to the university and to the church and to Adventist families who sent their kids here and made it so exciting for all of us to work here and to assure you that I'm not retiring, I hate that word actually, <laughs> because I'm tired of it or because I've lost the light of the lighthouse, I'm just getting older and I think I said to myself, I'm not courageous enough to stand before the board uh, this time and, and say, look, you can reappoint me if you want. I'm willing knowing that in the next quinquennium I will reach the big 8-0. And I thought, no, 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 no. This is not smart. I want to make that decision now and make a smart decision. And I was thinking of my wife too, who's been suggesting that maybe we ought to spend a little more time talking to each other. So this is done uh, for reasons of responsibility towards the university. I believe it's good for the university to have new people. And I believe it's good for our family to have a little more time together. So it's done that way. And I will miss it dearly. And I will probably shed a tear or two when I give up having to roll out of bed in the morning at 6.30 and get ready for work, which has been my life for all these years. But I'll get over it and find something interesting to do. In fact, my wife has made a very long list. <laughs> <laughs> And then in conclusion, absolutely, I would like to share with you, even though it's evening, I would like to share with you my morning prayer. I say the same prayer every morning. I pray about other things too, but I always say this prayer in the morning. And uh, so I'll tell you what it is. In fact, I'll pray it for you because I suspect you each one need it too goes like this Lord in heaven please today give me the wisdom to know what's right and then grant me the courage to do it and then Lord when I carry it out help me do it nicely and kindly and finally Lord 
Keep me humble, considering it only standard operating procedures. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. <laughs>